Hello, I'm Ms. A. Welcome to class W1002. Uh, this is writing and figurative language. Um, it's actually a part of a six class series, and I hope you will um, take part in all six classes. Um, there'll be a different lesson for each class based on figurative language. Um, the books you will need, um, you will need a dictionary. And you would also need verbs, nouns, adjectives, and more grammar fun. You can find out about that book in my bio. Um, it has great activities. And I also mentioned free activities. Uh, for example, to check out the chart on page four and page 26. And then also to try the uh, noun word scramble on page six. Okay. Again, I'm Ms. A. And I'm glad you're here with me. And um, let's just talk about reading and writing and the importance of reading and writing. Um, I hear many students in classrooms, oh, they all kind of whine a little bit when I say, okay, it's time to write a paragraph or it's time to write some sentences. Oh, they're not happy about it. But writing is great for you. Um, of course, we all to love to do fun things like me. I love going to the beach, put on my sunglasses. Um, I'm sure to take my sunscreen because, oh, that sun is hot out there. You can protect yourself. Then I have my nice fluffy blanket that I lay out on the sand and just have some good fun. But of course, Writing can be fun too. You know, you can just say that I love to write, okay? And you can love to write, to write too, okay? Um, so the last, in the, the last class, I showed a picture. And this is the picture that I showed. It is a picture of a group of penguins. And I ask everyone to write a paragraph about what they see here in this picture. Okay, it may just look like a group of penguins, but to someone else, it's an actual exciting adventure or story. Um, so let me read to you what I wrote about the penguins, okay? The Penguin Walking Club walked every day. Perry Penguin was their captain and walked like he was running from a bear. The others could barely keep up. Finally, Patrick Penguin, who was always in the back, shouted, This is a marathon I cannot continue. See? And you can create anything for a picture when you when you're writing your words, you can create whatever you like. Okay. That's the fun side of writing. Look at a picture and just create a story. So this week I have a new picture, of course. And you know, I always like to say, don't worry. You can do it, okay? You can write a nice little paragraph for me. But, you know, I always say the bare minimum is usually generally three for a paragraph. But it's a little better if you can do four or maybe even five, okay? So this is the start of the picture for this week. What can you write? What is that? What does that say to you? What is that picture? Oh. Hmm. Go ahead. Just look at it a little bit longer. And you write that a little story, paragraph. And I would like for you to send it to me because I would love to see what you saw uh, or hear what you saw. Okay. And as always, I say, send it to me.
because I would love to read what you've imagined. Uh, remember, I gave the definition of that word, imagine, is what you think of and what you create. It means to create a picture of something in your mind, okay? So be sure to use your imagination and let me know what you imagined. So go ahead and send it, have your parents send it to this email address and share with me, okay? I really would love to see what you wrote. Um, so of course, when we are writing, of course, you know, you're writing those wonderful sentences and you have to have the correct punctuation, okay? So you write your sentence and if you don't give the correct punctuation, it's just a jumble, it's just some words. And when you continue on, it's just mixed up. And it's like, what are they talking about? Okay. Hmm. So for example, take a look at this sentence. Okay. Oh no. The little bird fell out of the tree. What is missing here? Hmm. Does that sound like a little bit of excitement in that one? Oh no, the little bird fell out of a tree. I think it's missing. Well, first of all, we have a little pause here. Oh no, you need a little comma in there. Tell you about that later. But mainly we need an exclamation point because that sounds like a excitement in that story. Oh no, the little bird fell out of the tree. So you would need to end that sentence with an exclamation point, okay? Okay, let's look at another one. All right, here's another sentence for you. He walked to school every day. Mm, that's basically just a statement. He's just letting us know, or I'm just letting you know, he walked to school every day. So that sentence is missing a period. So at the end of just basic statements, um, you need to end it and you need to have that period there to let the reader know that that's the end of that sentence. So if you had another sentence and you just kept the sentences going, the reader would be like confused and lost. So you need that period, okay? Let's just look at one more, okay? All right, here's another one. Okay. Did the boat sink? Did the boat sink? I don't know. There's just some words. We don't have the punctuation to let us know. This is actually a question. So we need a question mark here. Okay. Did the boat sink? I hope not. Mm. Okay, so that's just a little bit of information on using your uh, various um, punctuation marks that you need at the end of a sentence because as you're writing your paragraph, you have to make that paragraph flow neatly and you have to end it with the correct punctuation, okay? So that is that on punctuation. Um, so now we will go on for our uh, figurative language. So again, figurative language are tools to make your writing interesting and exciting to the reader. Instead of just basic sentences, you can make your sentences exciting to keep the reader interested, okay? 
Um, have you read a story and thought to yourself, wow, well, I don't know about that story. It just didn't sound like very exciting at all to me. It didn't grab your attention, did it? Okay. Figurative language can help make a story or paragraph exciting and keep the reader's attention. All right, look at this sentence here. Okay, so this sentence My friend is fast. Okay, your friend is fast. But if you were writing a story or a nice paragraph that you wanted to be really interesting to someone, you can add a little more zing to it, make it a little more exciting. You can maybe say this instead. You could say, My friend is a speeding cheetah. Okay. Now, what is that telling you about your friend or his friend? What is it telling us? I believe it's stating that the friend is a bit fast because cheetahs are fast, but he didn't actually say it. See, that's the key to let the reader know without really just saying it out. And it's a little more interesting, it makes the story a little more fun, right? So which sentence do you think will get the reader's attention? I would go with this one, okay? My friend is a speeding cheetah. I love cheetahs, cheetahs are my favorite. I think I had mentioned a cheetah in the last one. I just love cheetahs. <clears throat> so writers use these figurative language skills. We talked about interesting writings, and that's what they use to make the writings more interesting. Okay, this example, this is an example of a metaphor. Okay, a metaphor. So a metaphor is directly comparing two unlike things as though they are similar, okay? So here I said, my friend is a speeding cheetah. So I, I'm just comparing my friend to the cheetah, right? And that's what you do with metaphors, okay? They help give that little bump to the story, okay? So when you write paragraphs for your school assignments, right now, start using the simile that was last class. So if you didn't see that one, go ahead and check that out and learn about the simile and then use a metaphor. Your teacher will be just so very excited and like, oh my gosh, they're using figurative language. Start using it early in your paragraphs, in your essays, at your things that you're writing. You know, just make your let your teachers know that you got this when you're doing your writing. Okay, it is very very important. Um. So, let me read to you a paragraph. And can, like, can you hear the metaphors here? I'm not gonna show it to you, I'll just read it to you, okay? My sisters are a circus. Their red and white striped dresses are tense, flowing in the breeze. The neighborhood children marvel at their balloons bouncing in the air when they walk. As they move through the dirt field, dust covers their covers the soles of their shoes. 
Can you recognize the force of that paragraph? There are a couple. And that is a way to make it a little more interesting. Again, I, I keep repeating that. Grabbing your reader's attention, making it more interesting. And that even helps you to be more excited about writing because you have ways to make it exciting, okay? Um, but uh, as always, when you're writing, what do you have to have to write? You need to have sentences, right? And you need to have words. And like I said last week, Words are the building blocks, okay? So I have a word here. And I gave a word last week. I'm not going to mention that word. I want you to go check that video out. Because what I want you to do is make sure you write down each word. Keep track of them. Because we're going to do an activity with those words, Okay. So let me just unscramble this one and see what we have here. This word for this one is help. Help. Be sure you write that one down. Be sure to get the other. If you don't have it already, go check out the video and get the last one word okay um and then you have to have words to write a to make a sentence so let's see what is this sentence let's put some words together word scrambles are great mm, they help you create words let's see our first word here is read hmm Move that up there. Read. Read. Every. Okay. Read. Every. I bet you can guess what this, the next word is. Read. Let's just move this up here. Read. Move that up. Read, move that up. And of course, I need my period here, right? For my sentence. Read every day. It's very important to read every day. Okay? Grab yourself a good book. Just read at least a couple of pages every day. Reading every day helps you to learn and discover new words that you may not know. So you build your vocabulary. And, and then of course, it's just interesting. Reading is very interesting, okay? Be sure you keep that word down, okay? Um, words, as I said last week, words are the puzzle pieces for sentences because you have to have them, right? Have to have them. Um, also keep track of the sentence. Write the sentence down here. Like I said, I have an activity for that. So be sure you do write that down. Okay. And last week, I gave the letter T. And I asked you to go to the dictionary. That's why you need your dictionary. I ask you to go to the dictionary and find any word that began with the letter T, okay? So my T word was teacher, okay? And a teacher, of course, gives knowledge, um, helps you to learn a new skill, um, provides information to teach. So my letter was T. Be sure you keep your T words, okay? 
and make sure that you have them written down, whatever letter that I give you. Um, for this class, it is the letter D. So go to the dictionary and any word that begins with the letter D. And you should always have your notebook, your sheet of paper, um, and whatever you use, be sure you're keeping them all on the same sheet or in the same notebook. That way you can go back to it really easy, okay? Um, so I always like to do a little bit of this time. I don't know if you've read, this is Geronimo Stilton. I'm not going to read the whole book, but I'm just, I'll just read a few pages. Last week, I read from uh, Cricket and the Singing Frog Sisters, but I'm not going to finish. And it was Cricket and the Singing Frog Sisters, Cricket Splish Splash. Mm, go ahead and find that book, read that. It's a very nice story. But let's just read, really, just listen a little bit about Geronimo Stilton. Lost treasure of the Emerald Eye. Ooh, that sounds really, really adventurous. Treasure, I love treasure hunts. I don't know about you. And I have my, my little bookmark, my lion bookmark. Yes. All right. Let's see what Geronimo is up to. Late again, putrid cheese puffs. I was, it was nine o'clock and I, Geronimo Stilton, was late for work again. I rolled out of bed in a minute and was dressed in two. Wow, I can never do that one. Pretty fast, considering I'm really not a morning mouse. I'm not a morning person either. Cheese slices. I hate Monday mornings. I grumble while brushing my teeth with cheddar flavored toothpaste. Hmm. Then I hurried downstairs, stumbled over my tail, and tumbled all the way down to the door. Geronimo. He's not having a good morning, is he? <clears throat> thump, thump, thump. So much for being quiet as a mouse. The streets of New Mouse City, the capital of Mouse Land, were as noisy as ever. I guess everyone was, was late, just like me. Cheese delivery trucks were everywhere. Horns blasting, mice, rats, and rodents of every size and shape race by in cars, taxis, and Mouse Jordan sneakers. Oh, wow. Taxi, I shouted, jumping into a cab. 17 Swiss cheese center. Minutes later, we pulled up to my editorial office. Oh, yes, I forgot to tell you that I run a newspaper. It's called the Rodents Gazette. Hmm, interesting. I took the stairs two at a time and burst inside. What a workout, I was pooped. Maybe I shouldn't have canceled my membership at Rats Lane after all. But before I could think about it, Mosella, my secretary, tackled me. Okay, it's very interesting. We have a whole mouse city going on here. Mr. Stilton, finally, she cried. Her glasses dangled off one ear. There is a crowd of rodents waiting to see you. The designers, the printers, the mouse who works the water cooler, 
and the editor-in-chief wants to speak with you immediately. I headed to my desk. Marcella followed. The copy machine is jammed, she continued. Another mailroom mouse quit. And boss, don't forget you promised me a raise. Ooh, I have a raise. My head felt like it was about to explode. Even my whiskers hurt. I wouldn't wish this day on the meanest cat ever. He hates Mondays. That's all I will read. The next chapter is Thea's Secret. Stay tuned for that in the next class. So I will end the class with this. Um, be sure to visit for a fun activity. You can go to this website. I'll just hold this up, give you a little time to write it down. Grab your pen, go ahead and write that down really quickly. Of course, you can look at the class and get it again, but go ahead, try to write it down. And of course, you have to have the password. So here's the password for this activity. Good fruit. <coughs> Hope you got that down. All right, so I hope you will join us for the next class. It will be uploaded soon. Again, if you didn't see the first one, go ahead and take a look. I'm Ms. A, and goodbye.